Hello, my precious friends. I really hope that you are doing great. Welcome to our today's class. It is our second lesson on the sixth topic of Form 4, which is called Mains Electricity. As usual, let me commence by giving the quote of the day, which states that nothing will work unless you do the work. We shall discuss that quote at the end of our class today. So today we are looking at further examples involving mains electricity. And our first example reads that um, the resistance of a power transmitting cable is 10 ohm and is used to transmit 11 kilovolts at a current of 1 ampere. If the voltage is stepped up to 160 kilovolts by a transformer, which is assumed to be ideal, determine part A, the current in the secondary coil. Remember, ideal transformer simply means that uh, for such a transformer, the power input is equal to the power output, and therefore such a transformer is assumed to have an efficiency of 100%. So determine part A, the current in the secondary coil. So since we are told to assume that the transformer is ideal, we are going to use, uh, that is, the equation for ideal transformers. Remember we looked at uh, uh, ideal transformers in our previous topic, which was called, um, that is, electromagnetic induction. You can just review. Uh, we covered that topic on this particular channel. So from that topic, when we were looking at ideal transformers, we were able to establish this relationship that voltage in the secondary coil divided by the voltage in the primary coil should give us the current in the primary coil divided by the current in the secondary coil. And this one is only possible for an ideal transformer. Therefore, to find uh, the current in the secondary coil, we'll substitute the voltage in the secondary coil. We are given, we are told that the if this voltage is stepped up to 160 kilovolts. So this is the voltage in the secondary coil, which is 160 kilovolts divided by the voltage in the primary coil was 11 kilovolts. So over 11 kilovolts should be able to give us the current in the primary coil. We are given as uh, one ampere, then divided by the current in the secondary coil. That is what we are looking for. So this will be 160 kilovolts into SI units of voltage, which are the volts. Uh, so we know that a thousand volts is equal to one kilovolt. Uh, what about 160 kilovolts? So this will be 160 kilovolts over one kilovolt multiplied by a thousand volts, which will give you 160 uh, thousand volts. Similarly, 11 kilovolts to SI unit. We know that a thousand uh, volts is equal to one kilovolt. What about 11 kilovolts? So this will be 11 kilovolts divided by one kilovolt multiplied by a uh, thousand volts, which will give you 11,000 volts. Then, of course, the current is still 1 ampere divided by the current in the secondary coil. So if I do cross multiplication, I'm going to have 160,000 volts multiplied by uh, the current in the secondary coil. So this 160,000 times current in the secondary coil should give us uh, 11,000 volts multiplied by 1 ampere. So 11,000 times 1 ampere. Then if I want to remain with current in the secondary coil, I'm going to divide both sides by 160,000. Therefore, the current in the secondary coil is equal to 11,000 times 1 ampere divided by 160,000. Um, that is by 160,000. So this quotient will give you a current in the secondary coil of 0 0.06875 uh, amperes. Then part B, they want us to find the power loss. Of course, the power is being lost in the transmission cables. Therefore, we say that power loss is always given by I squared R. That is the square of the current multiplied by the resistance. Again, we also derived this uh, formula in some previous uh, chapters. Of course, in electromagnetic induction, we are able to deduce uh, this formula for the power being lost by a transformer. Therefore, we, shall, we are going to use the current in the secondary coil because those are the transmission cables where current is being, that is where power is being lost. So the square of the current in the secondary coil, which is um, 0 0.06875 amperes, then multiplied by the, the resistance of that particular transmission cable, which is 10 ohms, so times 10. So if you take 0 0.06875 squared times 10, you are going to get a power loss of 0 0.047 to seven watts. So that is the power being lost in those transmission cables. Next, we look at our second example, which reads that a generator produces 660 kilowatt at a voltage of 110 kilovolts. So the voltage is stepped up to 132 kilovolts and the power transmitted through cables of resistance 200 uh, ohm to a step down transformer in a substation. Assuming that both transformers are ideal, calculate part A, the current produced by the generator. The current produced by the generator. 
So for the generator, we are given the uh, its power, which is being produced, which is 660 kilowatt. Then we are also given the voltage of 10 uh, kilovolts. So when given the power and uh, the voltage, you can actually find the current. So remember we said power can be given by VI. This is again a formula that we derived from a given form 3 topic, which was called heating effect of electric current. You can again review that particular uh, chapter to see how we arrived at these particular formulas. It's just a chapter under form 3 work in this particular channel. So from power is equals to VI, we can be able to establish that if we make current subject of the formula from P is equals to VI, we'll have current being equal to power over voltage. So since we are given the power in the primary coil or of, or of the generator, we are also given the voltage of the generator. Therefore, the power in the primary coil must be equal to the power that is the current in the primary coil must be given by the power in the primary coil divided by the voltage in the uh, primary coil so the power in the primary coil we are given as one uh, 660 kilowatt divided by the voltage in the primary coil we are given as a uh, 10 kilovolts so to convert each quantity in its respective si unit we know the si unit for power is the watt then we know that a thousand watt is equal to one kilowatt uh, what about 660 kilowatts? So that will be 660 kilowatt over 1 kilowatt multiplied by 1000 watts. So this will give us uh, 660,000 watts as the power in its SI unit. Similarly, 1000 volts is equal to 1 kilovolt. What about 10 kilovolts? So this will be 10 kilovolts over 1 kilovolt multiplied by 1000 volt, which will give us uh, 10,000 uh, volts, which is the voltage in its SI unit. So if you compute the quotient, that is 660,000 watt divided by uh, 10,000 volts, you are going to get a current of 66 amperes as being the current produced by the generator. Then a uh, part B of the question, that is Roman 2, they want us to find the current that flows through the transmission cables. In short, they want the current in the secondary coil. So because we are told the transformer, uh, both transformers are ideal, it simply means that the efficiency is 100%. Therefore, we can use the relationship voltage in the secondary coil divided by voltage in the primary coil should give us the uh, current in the primary coil divided by the current in the secondary coil. So voltage in the secondary coil, uh, we, are, we are given as 132 kilovolts. In its SI unit, it will be 132 kilovolts over 1 kilovolt multiplied by 1,000 volts, which will give you 132,000 volts. Then the voltage in the primary uh, coil, we were given the voltage to be 10 kilovolts. So in SI unit, that will be 10 uh, kilovolts over 1 kilovolt multiplied by 1,000 volts, which will give you 10,000 volts as the uh, voltage in the primary coil. Then the current in the primary coil, we were given, uh, we have already computed it here in part A, which is 66 amperes divided by the current in the secondary coil. So on... Uh, cross multiplication and dividing both side by uh, multiplying both side by 66 you'll get the current in the secondary coil as being 66 multiplied by 10000 divided by 132000 so this will give you the current in the secondary coil as being 5 amperes then roman that is roman 3 we are told to find the voltage drop across the transmission cables or in short we want to find the voltage in the secondary coil which is that, that is the voltage that dropped in the transmission cables so voltage is equals to current multiplied by resistance that is from the ohm's law v is equals to ir so the current actually in the transmission cables is just the current in the secondary coil which is uh, 5 amperes multiplied by the voltage in the transmission cables or in the secondary coil we were given the resistance in those transmission cables as being 200 ohm therefore the voltage in the transmission cables will be current in the transmission cables multiplied by resistance in the transmission cables which is 5 amperes times 200 ohm which will give us 1000 volts as the voltage in the secondary coil or the voltage in those particular uh, that is the voltage in the transmission uh, cables then uh, roman 4 they want us to find the power lost during transmission we say that power loss is equals to I squared R, that is the square of the current multiplied by the resistance. So because the power is being lost in the transmission cables, we'll use the current in the transmission cables multiplied by the resistance in those particular transmission cables. So the current in the transmission cables, which is the secondary current, is 5 amperes from here. So 5 amperes squared, which is just 5 amperes times 5 amperes, 
multiplied by the distance in the transmission cables, which we are given as 200 ohm. So if you take 5 times 5 times 200, you are going to get 5,000 watt as the power that is being lost in those particular transmission cables. Then um, uh, lastly, Roman 4, we are given, that is Roman 5, we are given uh, to find the power that reaches the substation. So the power that reaches the substation will be the power generated by those particular generators minus the power that is lost in this particular transmission cables. So the power in the substation will be the power generated minus the one that has been lost on the way through those uh, through the resistance in the transmission cables. So power generated minus power lost. The power generated we have already uh, given on the question as 660 kilowatt, which in SI unit will be 660,000 watt. So you just take 660 kilowatt over 1 kilowatt times 1,000 a watt, which will give you 660,000 watt. Then the power lost, we have already computed it here in Roman 4 as 5,000 watt. So the difference between 660,000 watt minus 5,000 watt, you'll get 6, 6, uh, 655,000 watt as the power that is being uh, that that is getting to those uh, the local substations. Then lastly, I have an exercise that I recommend you should try at your own free time to get the understanding of the concept that you have just learned. Of course, if you have any problems in handling any of the questions, feel free to drop a comment specifying the question that you need help in. And as usual, I'm always here to try and help where possible. So we've come to the end of our class today, but we need to discuss the quote of the day. The quote of the day stated that nothing will work unless you do the work. So the quote is reminding us that no matter how big you dream, no matter how well you plan, no matter how well you strategize, no matter how many personal study timetables you create, no matter how much talented you might seem to be, if you don't take action and do the work, nothing is going to work. Therefore, we should train ourselves to always take action in every circumstance and avoid giving excuses and complaining uh, uh, about everything. Remember, even if you create a very good study timetable, but if you don't follow that particular timetable strictly, then you are not going to achieve your dreams. Therefore, you have to take action in every circumstance and avoid giving excuses and complaints. And lastly, recall that a person who tried and failed is far much closer to success than the one who gave an excuse on why they should not try. So it is only the action that separates uh, the successful from those who have not succeeded. Thank you very much for accompanying me until the end of this particular lesson. I do not take it for granted. In case you are new to the channel, kindly hit the subscription button and also turn on the notification bell so that whenever I upload a new video, you'll get notified. Until next time, this is Kind Tuition Academy. Thank you very much.